Hey everyone, welcome to my forecast. My name is Evan Freiberger, and believe it or not, what we are looking at right now on the satellite here just off of the coast of California is the beginning of our next pretty large storm that's going to be coming into the United States. This little batch of energy is going to slowly move over the California mountains and eventually try to spin up over here near New Mexico, bringing in a lot of rain, potentially some severe weather for Texas and Oklahoma, and also maybe some snow. Pretty much where this storm is now is about where this next one is going to end up, so we're going to have a lot more cooler air, and the Great Lakes might be seeing their first big time lake effect snow event and that could happen for anybody in areas like michigan going into new york pennsylvania even illinois and indiana might get on some snow so we're going to be talking about all of that in today's forecast and at the end of the forecast we'll also be talking about this little bit of swirl over here near mexico that has probably a low chance of being really impactful i gotta admit my previous forecast on this storm was completely wrong i think a lot of people thought this thing was gonna be something but uh, we'll give you an update on what it's actually most likely going to be now that we have a little bit more certainty. But hey, this is tropical depression, so it's technically not nothing. Before we get started, though, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you do end up liking this forecast. But let's go ahead and get right into it. So as you can see, here's our pocket, our little area of energy. You can see we got a little bit of bubbling going on out there. Nothing too crazy. This is not really causing too much of issues. Maybe a little bit of rain and some snow in the mountainous regions here uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Switching this over to the GFS, the model that we use in order to figure out what these storms are going to do potentially in the future. Watch this little area right here as I move it forward. So first, it's going to kind of dive down to the south and east and then eventually interact uh, with the California mountains a little bit, kind of roll off of it into uh, Mexico. And then eventually you can see we start to see a little bit more spin happening over here in the Mexico region. Then eventually this thing starts to spin up, it starts to spin up into a low pressure system as it ejects off into the United States. And kind of the first thing we're going to be talking about with this storm is that potential for rain and severe weather out here for parts of Texas and Oklahoma city or in oklahoma as well as you can see this is happening at the 18th here at around 6 a.m is about when those rain and storms are going to get started potentially a little bit earlier uh, on the 18th as well as we go into the late night hours we could see some you know stronger severe weather maybe even tornadoes out of this storm given the fact that this tropical system is a little bit weaker this storm might have a little bit more storm food food to eat uh, in terms of getting those storms a little bit stronger um so let's go to go over what the kinematics are looking like uh, with this storm. So looking at the storm food itself, you can see it's not overly intense as we go into the 18th at around 12 a.m., but it does build to get close to 1,000 joules per kilogram or basically enough bacon or steak for this storm to eat, these storms to eat to get stronger and severe. And then as we go into the next day, you can see that that instability kind of builds up again later in the evening on the 18th. So it's really going to be late night uh, on, the, uh, on the 17th going into midday on the 18th where the severe weather is going to be it's highest chance of happening if we come over and try to see what the what the uh, the person in with that tub how much are they spinning that water above these things or you know the water vapor uh, to cause some spin what we do to find that out which eventually is going to cause some tornadoes um, is we go up into the atmosphere here so if we go up into the layer above where the surface base cape is happening kind of bring it back uh, to that moment where we you know start to see a little bit of that instability that storm food build in around 12 a.m. on the 18th here you can see that we do have a decent amount of lower level shear and then eventually we see that start to move off to the east and kind of consolidate get a little bit stronger throughout the day as we get another um, you know kind of recovery of that instability you know we see yet another area of some stronger lower level winds so the winds are, are good there it caused tornadoes now let's go up a little bit higher in the atmosphere so at around 12 a.m. you can see this uh, little bit of a trough is ejecting uh, here with a little bit of stronger winds even above the winds we just watched. And those are going to work together to cause some spin or that little whirlpool inside of the storm. It's going to allow uh, you know, a tornado to drop out of it. So definitely keeping an eye on these kind of subtle movements here. The moisture problem is going to be an issue. But as we get closer, we should get a better understanding of what's going to happen. And as you can see, you know, we're going to have winds strong enough aloft and below and enough storm 
warm food at the surface to cause some severe weather. And the SPC does agree here. As you can see, we do have a little bit of a slight risk, a 15% chance for severe weather day four. So that's going to be, you know, late night on day four here. San Angelo, Abilene, Brownwood, Kerrville. Got to be watching out for some severe weather. And then going into the next day, you can see that that shifts to the east a little bit. I can imagine this getting expanded a little bit more to the east as we get closer. We'll see as the confidence build. But, you know, some areas that are going to have to be watching out for another round of severe weather. It's Austin, Fredericksburg, Round Walk, Killeen, Waco, Brownwood, and also Fort Worth, parts of Dallas, potentially a little bit to the east of that as well. So multiple days of severe weather to watch out for. Uh, we'll keep you in the know. But that is not all this storm is going to be capable of doing. As you can see, we do have a lot of rain here. That's eventually going to be pushing off to the north. A lot of rain uh, for you know the central plains going up into the northern plains. Parts of the Ozark, too, are going to get in on some rains, maybe a little bit of thunderstorm or severe weather activity. But as this pushes up to the north, and we keep continuing to push this right there, switch it over to the temperatures, you can see that that moisture is right next to where we're going to have some cold colder temperatures, some freezing temperatures. Uh, they're going to be even colder aloft, meaning you know, you're know you going to have snow falling uh, through the parts of the atmosphere and causing you know, some snow accumulation being possible here. And as I push uh, our simulated radar forward, these, uh, these little bits of rain that are running into this cold air is like Autobots roll out and it transforms into snow. As you can see, we do have uh, you know a snow band starting to form here in North to South Dakota. As I push this to the east, uh, you can see that more snow starts to fall a little bit further north and i know everybody down here is like what the heck man where's our snow is it ever going to come and it's like well wait a minute as the storm kind of circulates here you can see that snow starting to move down uh, to the south and east potentially even some snowflakes as far south as missouri we're still watching for that potential but the highest chance of snow is going to be pretty much in this circle here right in this area where we're going to be getting that uh snowfall and that lake effect snow and this is going to be starting really on the 20th at around 3 p.m and then moving into the ohio Valley, you can see that there are some disagreements here initially on whether or not this is going to be rain or snow. So we got to be watching that trend. And then going into the 22nd, the 20, uh, the like early morning in the 22nd, you can see that we're still got some snow lingering around, still lingering around. Then eventually it transitions into more to lake effect snow, but there are still some chances there that this could be rain. Again, you know, we've been seeing this trend kind of continue uh, over and over. Let's kind of pause this right here and then we'll switch over here really quick to tropical tidbits and then we'll bring this back into previous runs so previous model runs uh, showing what their opinion was and how that's changed over time and as you can see as i go back you see how this was more snow the last run the run before that it was a little bit uh, later there but uh, let's kind of push this back to here you know you can see last run snow snow a little bit further up to the north snow a little bit further down to the south snow of a great lake snow event all the way over there so you can see we still have a lot of uncertainty here but as we get closer and closer to this event Event, which is what we're doing right now we're going back to our current model run you can see that you know there's looking like it might be just a little bit warmer air which could disrupt uh, some snow further down the line but it's still something to keep an eye on but you know given the fact that they, the 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 temperatures there right above the great lakes are so high that might be playing uh, a factor here in this little snowfall forecast because again that rain's gonna have to fall through that layer before it hits the surface uh, as that wind kind of scrapes over the lakes there and causes a little bit of snow convection there so you know gotta watch out for that but you know as i push this forward you know that might eventually transition more into snow but it's going to be a close call folks this is not a slam dunk forecast by any means but the snow chances are definitely there coming back over to our little swirly dude off of the coast of mexico we're going to be going over the latest forecast on this guy as well latest code of uncertainty is bringing this near honduras as a tropical storm then it kind of interacts with land it's going to keep it a relatively weak storm and then it's going to interact with land again in the yucatan peninsula it's kind of double land below with this storm is going to keep it relatively weak. And as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, it, especially down here in kind of the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, might have a small chance of getting a little bit stronger than this, maybe a tropical storm. But as it interacts with that shear, that drier air that's going to be coming in with that snowmaker potential, severe weather maker that we were talking about, um, you know, that's going to sling some drier air into the Gulf of Mexico. And 
extra shear as well, which is going to kind of rip this storm apart. So I'm not really seeing any big, uh, you know, any big, you know, chances for a, you know, hurricane or anything like that happening. You know, maybe just some rain, maybe an increased tornado potential as this thing gets to Florida. But, you know, in the end, I have to admit, my last forecast was dead wrong. I mean, usually when we see that much consistency on the long term models, you know, it, it's telling us something. But as you can see, they massively all shifted to the south. And let's come over here. I can show that a little bit better with this. And last time we looked at the ensembles, it was bringing almost every single one of them was bringing them over here in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. But as you can see, they have massively shifted down to the south. And the main reason why that is because this high pressure system that is going to be coming uh, kind of to uh, on the backside of this low pressure system we just dealt with, it's going to be a little bit stronger and a little bit more expansive, kind of making and kind of blocking out the system from really entering into this area and eventually going to, it's going to kind of push it. Most of that moisture in the Mexico, and it's going to be very hard for it to recover in this kind of environment here in the Gulf of Mexico. The thing we're going to do here is just kind of compare and contrast what these models are thinking about this storm uh, as we go into the future. And as you can see, the GFS kind of has this hanging around a tropical depression or storm as it pushes into the Yucatan Peninsula, completely dies off, moves up to the north, interacts with this low pressure system that's going to be bringing that severe weather threat to Texas, kind of gets shredded apart. Maybe a little bit of a tornado threat as we go into the 20th here of November for Florida. So got to be watching out for that. But then after that, this thing is out of our hair for the most part. Looking at the Euro, you can see we have a similar picture. Hangs out a little bit longer there in the um, kind of that area near the Yucatan Peninsula. Eventually rockets off to the north with that approaching low pressure system. That moisture gets moved into Florida. Maybe a little bit more disorganized, a little bit less of a threat. Uh, tornadoes, a little bit more of a threat there for flooding. But overall, kind of a similar picture. Last, we'll be looking at the Canadian model here, pushing this forward. A very, very similar picture. So we're getting a huge amount of ensemble agreement. I think this is going to be kind of the scenario that plays out. Again, the ocean water temperatures are not super hot. There's a little bit there to sustain it for a little bit of redevelopment. But after this, if this thing goes into the Yucatan Peninsula as a weaker system, which is the most likely scenario here as it interacts with land, it's going to shred it apart. And it's, there's really not much of a chance for it to recover with all of that extra shear. And the water temperature is being a little bit lower and then all that dry air is going to be coming in on the back side of this low pressure system. But all right, everybody, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys again for watching. You guys are awesome. Continuing to come in and watching these videos and trusting me with your weather forecasts. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, make sure that you are liking and subscribing if you want new updates from me. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. Y'all take it easy. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time.